This is my thesis portfolio flip through plus tips at the end of the video. I will walk you through my work, what I've included, my InDesign file, and how it was all printed in my final presentation and end of year show. This all have the potential to dramatically upgrade your portfolio game, so let's get started. And the winner is created this portfolio at the end of my master's for my thesis course so it sums up that entire process so it's not a portfolio that i would use to apply for work the cover page is a nice and easy one to replicate it's a render that sums up the project and a few details about me and my id all that boring stuff you are more than welcome to read my thesis statement and references, also some archival images that I've collaged together with quotes that I've extracted from various authors, you know, to make it sound super legit. <laughs> A huge influence of the project was William Morris, hence the background of this video. The first and the second were in the first semester, which was a case study and a site study. The case study was The Shelter of Roman Ruins by Peter Zumthor. And the second chapter, which was the site study, is a site study into Highgate. So now the case study and the site study were predetermined by my lecture. So I chose the actual site, but I didn't choose the area, if that makes sense. And for the case study, we were given a list of different case studies that we could have looked into. And me and my group, this was a group project, we've chosen The Shelter for Roman Ruins by Peter Zumthor. This whole portfolio was about 90 pages max. So they wanted all of the best work to be put into 30 pages. I know, like, who can sum up their entire project in 30 pages, but that's what they wanted. And then any work that didn't fit into the 30 pages could go into the index, which was 60 pages. The good thing about this portfolio is that there is no size limit. So we're starting off with the case study, which is The Shelter of Roman Ruin by Peter Zumthor. A little bit of building overview, a few information, and also a site plan drawing. This was done in Illustrator. And then some historical context about the project and this was so important to the project because it's about roman ruins so we wanted to look into that a bit more and try to understand that history so we found an archival image of the remaining ruin buildings on the site and then on the right i've created this drawing which is uploaded on youtube showing the building in historical context more images and a little bit of information on this entrance part of the building and this drawing was so annoying because the line rate just would not get right because of the planks of the building so it shows up as all black but luckily when you print it it doesn't look that way and now for the piece de resistance of the project is these two images so we were asked to pick a key image of the project and we chose this staircase because of how respectful it is to the roman ruins you can see that it just barely touches the ground so we were asked to recreate that by creating an actual model so you can see on the right the real image from the project and then on the left is our model image and i'm so impressed by it i mean i am not a naturally gifted person when it comes to model making i don't have the patience but this was so much fun i've created those roman ruins from clay and then we've added these gravel on the floor everything was printed out of mdf and then we stained it and applied textures to it and i highly highly recommend that if you have some spare time do this for a project because it's so much fun and then we have the drawings of that key moment or key space. So this is that shelter and then it's four elevations. This page is bigger, I think it's on an A2. And that was it for the case study. I have way more information and drawing for the case study, but it's going to be in the index because I have to meet the 30 page limit. We are moving on to Highgate, which was my site study. And we were asked to capture three images that show infraordinary moments of Highgate. So Highgate is an area of Birmingham, England. And during the 1960s, all of the housing was demolished and a large part of the district was zoned for industrial use. So there are some really good old industrial buildings. One of them is this previous shoe factory called Stone Galleon that has been derelict for many many years and you can see its facade on the first image and this facade or this building ended up being the main focus of my thesis project and then for the second key image 
It's the back elevation of the building where you can see the remaining structure of an older building that was attached to the stone galleon but then was demolished. The third key image is another nearby industrial warehouse that's also been derelict and vandalized. The site plan of the building where you can see the shape of it, it sits on a pretty important road of Highgate. The building now has been bought by a developer and they are redesigning it into apartments, very luxury apartments. So I wasn't able to go inside unfortunately but I found these plans on the planning application portal. And then I created these drawings exploring the ruined condition of the building. One is of that courtyard and then on the right is a drawing that I've never done anything like it before, but I was so interested in creating composite drawings and we were asked to kind of explore and create drawings that are very different from plan sections and elevations. So that was kind of my attempt at showing plan, elevation, all in one drawing. And I think it was pretty successful in my opinion. Then we have the existing elevations, the front and the back. Then we have site elevations. The main drawing was created in AutoCAD then exported to Illustrator where I've added all of the textures and the colors. And this ended up being a very, very big sheet. I think it was an A0 and the scale was 1 to 50. I'm not entirely sure, but it was pretty big. Then we have existing site sections. And now we are on to my proposal for the architectural thesis, which is titled Between Ruin and Rebuild. I chose this topic from the research I did into my case study and site study and I wanted to continue that narrative and build on the work instead of just putting it to the side as these industrial derelict buildings are almost like a modern day ruin and it also aligned with my interests for building conservation and heritage. So. I would suggest and advise you to pick a topic that you are interested in and also builds on the work that you do for precedent studies and site studies and also try to solve a problem within your own community. I think that would be a really good topic. So following on the Stone Galleon shoe factory of Highgate, I wanted to also look at the urban decay of Highgate to see if this was worth pursuing as a thesis project because the whole point was to explore infraordinary moments of Highgate. So it wouldn't make sense for me to pick a unique case of a derelict building and then say that this is pretty common for Highgate. Upon further research and this map, that there are a lot of derelict industrial buildings. So I've noticed that the majority of these buildings were on Bradford Street and extend outward to nearby areas. And this drawing was only for buildings, so this doesn't include empty plots, yards, and parking areas. So the urban decay is far greater than what is shown. And I've also showed some pictures that I've taken of these industrial buildings on the right. The diagram on the left shows where all of these industrial buildings that are derelict are concentrated and then on the right you can see it across the morphology of Highgate. So now it comes to the proposition. So what is the solution for these industrial buildings? Are we supposed to demolish them? Are we supposed to give them to developers where they can turn them into luxury apartments? I wanted to create a drawing of the real cost of demolition in terms of the total embodied carbon that it would generate. And then I've created these four diagrams kind of explaining the key aims of the project. My influences were this project by DVVT, which took a similar approach to my thesis project. And then on the right, again, is the Shelter of Roman Ruins by Peter Sumthor. Essentially, the program of the project will be ateliers and a community center for artists. And these ateliers are scattered throughout the building. They are easily adaptable over time, resulting in a project that is continually changing and adapting. Then I've created these lifespan drawings of the building, showing how the project would progress into various stages. So this could be across a few months or a few years. And this is showing all of the stages together and all of the little interventions that I've created within the building. So the first stage would be creating a maintenance office with accessible facilities and vertical access so that person would work there and maintain the building, clean it, repair any damages. And then the second stage would be creating this link between the front facade of the building and the yard space at the back and then creating activity spaces and a rooftop winter garden for the artists. Finally, partially inhabiting the building through ateliers. This is the proposed site plan. You can see the yard space and how I've designed it. 
and then it's the proposed ground floor plan in context and then the ground floor plan in more detail so you can see on the left we have a lobby space and then a coffee shop and an exhibition spaces with a few facilities and then you have this garden link between the lobby and the front of the building all the way to the back of the building and then you have these atelier spaces that are scattered and because this project was so focused on the temporal nature of the project, if you look closely at the floor plan, you can see that some of the ateliers are not fully constructed. You can see here on the right. And then there's this big storage space where they can store their construction materials. And then we have the proposed first and second floor plan, which is mainly a void and some offices and activity spaces. And then the third floor plan, which is the winter garden, you have also a terrace and activity spaces and a kitchen. And then we have the roof plan and the proposed elevations. And these were created and drawn up in AutoCAD, but then textured and colored in Illustrator and this page. Was, I think an A0. And then we have the proposed sections which are so full of life and colorful compared to the original ones which make me so happy. This is a view of the rear intervention and also an cinematic show in its construction. This is a view from the entrance through the courtyard and then it's the exhibition space the winter garden and the process for creating these drawings are already on youtube so i'll have that linked in the cards these are by far one of the prettiest and the richest renders i've ever created so i was so so happy with them And then I created these exonometrics showing how the atelier might be used by different people. One, it could be used as a meeting space or a drawing studio or a textile room and also a workshop. So it's really a multifunctional space. In addition to our thesis, we also have a course called Negotiated Practice, which you are asked to create something that relates to your thesis. So I've decided to create a booklet that sums up the process of constructing these ateliers since it'll be self-built by the community. So I thought it'd be great to create create a document summarizing the assembly and disassembly of these units. So we had to mention that document into our main thesis portfolio. So I created this drawing and then this is more research into the precedent for negotiated practice. So these are some projects that I looked at that have designed for assembly and disassembly. And it was also important to explain how your work for negotiated practice builds on your thesis work. Now we have my proposed facade model. I've seen loads of inspiration images on Pinterest and even the precedent project by DVVT they created a model like that which had people and plants and birds and it made it feel a lot more playful so this was all done by hand I've used MDF to cut out all of the pieces and then print out the textures and then all of the wooden interventions were created by hand the people were 3d printed people that I bought from Amazon and then the trees I've created myself, the bird and the flowers were from a pack, I think, from hobby craft or something. This is another model I've created for a column and how it can be constructed. And then pictures of my atelier models, which is so crazy that I've done this by hand because I've never created, you know, balsa wood models before, but it was super fun. And the clay part at the bottom represents rammed earth. And I thought that was such a creative way to use that. And now we are on to the index of the portfolio showing my development work. So this was an initial view of the winter gardens. This was way, way, way back, I think, at the start of my thesis. This is more research into the Roman life in Chur, back to the shelter of Roman ruins by Peter Zumthor, some information about the architect and his style, his design characteristics, building's relationship to its context, building overview, more drawings and images, looking into the details of the materials and the joints, and also looking at the importance of that staircase, the ground floor plan, sections. This is the index for the research into Highgate, the nature of the industry, information about listed buildings, drawings showing the site in context, and also internal images of the stone galleon, which were so, so difficult to find. But I'm so thankful that I did because they've been really helpful. And then this was an initial facade model. 
So this is my portfolio on how it looks in InDesign. Please ignore all of the errors because I haven't linked anything since I submitted this portfolio, but you can see that I've created a grid where everything should fall into place, but personally, the grid just didn't work for the projects and the layouts that I had in mind. So I don't think that you should create a layout and then force your drawings into that layout. I think the layout and the drawings should work together. So you can see if I go down and up, you can see that the page sizes change, but that of course is something that my lecturer was fine with and all of the students were doing the same thing. So it wasn't just something I did. It was just something that was agreed upon with everyone. But things that kept my layout consistent, which is the font that I use and also the page headers at the top. I always had the same north arrow, always the same scale bar in the same location. So that really helped with creating a consistent layout. And when in doubt, if you want something to look really clean and professional in a sheet, just center it and make sure that all of the spaces are even. I like to justify my text, but I know that some people don't like to do that. And this took a lot of time and practice to get to a style of portfolio where I am happy with. And you can see that in some of the sheets, I literally only have one drawing, but it's a really big, so the scale is huge. And the lecturer can see all of the work and the detail that I've put into this drawing. So make sure that your drawings have enough breathing space. Don't try to crowd so many things in one page because that kind of distracts away from your drawings. But for example, some sheets where it's a similar type of drawing so I would group sections together, group elevations together. Whenever I'm designing a layout or I'm adding any images or drawings I would kind of think okay what would this sheet be called if it had a title? So if it was called like exploring the ruined nature of the building then I would only put drawings that speak about that. And another great tip that I have is when you are using InDesign you can see that next to your sheets there are empty spaces and if I scroll through that, it's kind of empty right now, but if I show you like a different or an older version of the portfolio, these would be filled with quotes and research and different drawings that I'm inspired by. And this is really great because you can keep all of the information all in the same file and it makes your portfolio just seem well thought out, very thorough with the research and the drawings. And also something to consider is retaining the quality of your drawing. So anytime I'm adding a drawing to my InDesign, it's always the project file and not an exported JPEG. If I created this drawing in Photoshop, I will import the Photoshop file. And if I used Illustrator, I will import the Illustrator file. I don't recommend you creating a portfolio in Photoshop because it's just so difficult and if you are constantly making things bigger and smaller then you will lose the quality and also if you are updating any files it will automatically update in InDesign but if you do that in Photoshop or PowerPoint it won't update. And I also wanted to show you guys how this work all of it looked in my final panel. I'm super happy with it. This is my large model, which looks huge. I didn't print everything. I only printed out things that I thought were important to explain in my presentation. And then we also had an end of year show, and this is how I've refined the work. Because it's for an exhibition, they wanted certain images to be bigger. And the winner is Rasha Shrewru. So thank you so much for watching and I would really really appreciate it if you guys can leave me in the comments down below what would you like to see from me next because I haven't been uploading very regularly because I'm kind of struggling with video ideas so if you have any ideas please leave them in the comments down below. And I also wanted to mention that my portfolio and the negotiated practice will be available on my Patreon page as a PDF. So if you wanted to look through it closely and read everything and also see all of the pages that didn't make it in this video, head on over to my Patreon page. I'll have it linked in the description box. I love you guys so much. I'm Lisha Shiruru and I will see you next time.